Hicksville, Long Island. Oh, you know where that is? Yeah, you don't know where Hicksville, Long Island is? It's easy to find. All you gotta do is go to New York and then drive east until slavery's still legal. <laughs> and then turn around, because you're in the Hamptons. You wanna come back? It's a couple of miles. Oh man, I love New York, actually. I lived in New York for 10 years, but I was ready to upgrade towns. So that's why I moved back to Everett. <laughs> um, now, I left New York because I have a kid, and uh, I'm not gonna be one of those comedians that says having a kid ruins your life, you know? Because that's not true. It ends it. <laughs> just, just ends it. Now, I always wanted to have kids, um, and that's why I was really glad when I had a son. And that's not sexist, it's just that I want to have kids and girls become women when they're like 12. Whereas boys become men sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time, nothing happens to us. Right, we get bigger and hairier, but up here, you got an eight and a half year old yeah. skateboarding Lego maniac flipping the switches to a man machine. That's not healthy. Right, we just got a little boy up there being like, ah, what do we do? I don't know, uh, sports, drink beer, grow a beard. Are we good? Yeah. And, that is, and that is why we all grow beards now, right? If you're honest with yourself, you just want to be able to look in the mirror and go, hey, at least you look like a man. <laughs> I think you got him fooled. Okay. <laughs> Off to Comic-Con again. Let's get out of here. <laughs> On my scooter before Frisbee class, like a modern Seattle gentleman. <laughs> no, I'm not a grown-up. You know how I know I'm not a grown-up? I still refer to adults as grown-ups. <laughs> That's what children call big people. <laughs> I am getting older though, I'll show you. Take my hat off and uh, okay. That was not a confidence booster. <laughs> Got some literal shock and awe and a couple of pity woos. <laughs> I know what I look like, you guys. I'm jealous of guys who have like a nice shaped head, they can shave it down to the skin, or they have like male pattern baldness. Because I don't have any pattern going on up here. This looks like a chemical burn. I just look unwell everywhere I go. This is not a good look. That's why now, I'm a hat guy! That's right! I never take this thing off. I know everyone's really clapping because they're like, thank God he put that hat back on. I could not have looked at that for 58 more minutes. No, I seriously do. The only time I take my hat off is for those jokes. Otherwise, I sleep with it. I wear it at dentist appointments, swim lessons, Haircuts, I don't give a shit. Cut around it, <laughs> please and thank you. I'm a hat guy. The poor man's toupee, that's what I call it. No one will know my truth. My dad is a cool dad, you know, bald, with a ponytail. Cool dad, cool dad. All right, bald with a ponytail, cool dad. That's fun, getting raised by a guy who looks like a homeless magician. I'm always like, Dad, why would you do that to your family? I'm gonna stand next to you at every baseball game and soccer match? Is it just so important to you that all the other dads know you've got weed for sure? I can't think of another reason. <laughs> Bald with a ponytail, cool dad. He's a cool dad. He called me when I lived in New York. He goes, hey Taylor, 
what are you gonna do if your son's gay? And I was like, whoa, dad. First off, it is 2017. I live in New York City and my wife works in theater. My, my son is gonna be at least gay. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I was like, Dad, what am I going to do if my son's gay? I don't know. What did your dad do? <laughs> cool dad. Cool dad. I blame my son for my hair loss. I know it's his fault. I can't really prove it, but his hair grew in in the exact same pattern that mine fell out. <laughs> That's suspicious. And then he got his first tooth, I coughed, and a filling fell out of my mouth. <laughs> Dude, I knew having kids was gonna age me, but I didn't know the father-son aging process was gonna be so tit for tat. <laughs> hair for hair, tooth for tooth. What happens to me when his balls drop, you guys? <laughs> about. And that's why everyone, when you're trying to have kids, is trying to talk you out of it. And they, especially me, like, I thought I was ready to have kids because I had finally saved a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's right out there. A whole one K. Gotta use a letter now. That's how much money I got. Yep, yep. That's, uh, three zeros. That's enough for twins, baby. Let's go. We ready? We weren't. Um, <laughs> but there's no such thing as being ready. Like people say, oh, don't have kids, you'll fuck them up. And I'm always like, yeah, I know. That's what, that's what you do to kids. You guys can chill out, okay? I'm not saying I'm gonna do it on purpose. Uh, I'm not Catholic, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's inevitable. It's what you do, it's what happens. Like my parents were great parents. I am forever living in their shadows as amazing examples of how to be a good parent. They were present, engaged, always said the right thing. Like, you're gonna accomplish all your dreams, which created a happy kid, but a delusional adult. <laughs> I still think. I'm gonna be a professional skateboarding stand-up comic who's gonna dunk for the Supersonics. <laughs> In fucking Oklahoma now, I guess. That's not gonna happen. And I guess I'm just immature, you know? And I know a lot of people say that. Oh, I'm so immature. I still watch my laundry at my parents. And I'm always like, yeah, I'm pretty immature too. I uh, still walk up the stairs on all fours. <laughs> What? That's the more fun way to walk upstairs. And for all of you guys who weren't laughing, the next time you're alone in a stairwell, <laughs> kind of sad, right? Work sucks. You're gonna be like, all right, let's see what that comedian was talking about. And if you go up those stairs, and you make your favorite animal noise, right? Like, baka bunga, baka baka, or whatever the fox says. And then, if you get onto the top of that staircase and you're not at least smiling, fucking kill yourself. Fucking <laughs> throw yourself back down those stairs. Fun is not an option for anymore. You forgot. I'm not proud of this, but I've been skateboarding for like 20 years. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Silence is the right reaction. <laughs> It is the most embarrassing thing about me. Do you know how weird, you know how hard it is to not realize your best friend is 14 until it gets weird? <laughs> that happens to me all the time. I don't see age, right? I just see someone who's really good at skating, so I'm just like, hey, you wanna go to the bar? And they're like, I have homework. And I'm like, I'm a sad, sad man. <laughs> You know what people call me now? An adult skateboarder. I hate that expression. That sounds like I have a serious problem. That's 
sounds like a diagnosis. Oh, he's got a case of the adult skateboarder. We don't know how much time he has. He's destined for a life of bad knees and no money. I should, right? I should be in a basement right now with a bunch of other dudes like me, you know, just... Hey, what's up, guys? Name's Taylor. Recovering adult skateboarder. It's been two weeks, no shredding. Pretty stoked. It's hard, you know? A lot of good videos out right now. That's a slippery slope. One day you're watching videos, next thing you know, you're under a bridge at 2 a.m. hanging out with two dudes in Manhattan Park, setting up a bump trail, trying to film an ender for a video that's never gonna get made. And that's when you realize you left your kid in the Uber. Anyways. <laughs> fuck rollerbladers, skate or die. Good meeting. It doesn't make any sense. Now, it's a foreign language to most people. My mom didn't know what we were talking about. She thought we were talking about girls half the time. Like, we'd be driving around in the car and she'd see like a girl sitting on a bench and she'd be like, hey boys, what do you think about that girl on the bench? And me and my brothers wouldn't even see the girl. We'd just see the bench. <laughs> so we're like, hey, thanks for pointing that out, mom. I'm gonna grind the shit out of that thing. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna wax it up. Hit it front side, back side. And then Thomas, you can hit it, you're goofy, right? You can come in, follow it up, right? And then, and then we can light it up, film it, put it on the internet, what do you guys think? And then my mom's like, what the fuck is going on back there? I'm currently plotting the murder of two cats. First off, you guys don't know these cats. <laughs> Before you start judging me, these cats are 24 and 25 years old. Exactly. They should be dead already. Why are they still walking the earth? You guys would want to kill them too if you saw them. They're haunting to look at. Do you know what a two decade old cat looks like? Their eyes crooked, their tongue sticking out, their neck sideways. If you, if you came into the kitchen at midnight, flipped on your switches, and saw two of Satan's hell beasts before your feet, you'd put on your high heels and start river dancing. You, don't, you know what I mean. So anyways. <laughs> I'm a good person, guys. I used to like these cats. I used to like cat people, but these cats have turned me against both. I have no patience for either, okay? <laughs> At first, I took these cats. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save them. They've been dying for two years. Right, so I take these cats to the vet, and I'm like, what do I do with these cats? And the, even the vet's like, I don't know if these are cats anymore. <laughs> I think what's best is you just go put them back in whatever pet cemetery you pulled them out of. <laughs> just get them out of my office. I don't want to be hexed or whatever, okay? <laughs> So I'm like, oh God, I take the cats back to my house and I'm like, what do I do with these cats, right? Like, they've been dying for two years. I don't know if the cat Grim Reaper has lost my address or something, but somebody's gotta do this job. So I'm like, what do I do, you know? Like, I feel like poison would be the nice thing, but like, you know, I could do that, right? I've seen Game of Thrones and they're the Joffrey of cats, let me tell you. So they have it coming, but then they like shit. <laughs> But then, I'm not proud of these thoughts, by the way, guys. These aren't like I'm stoked about these ideas. But then they do something really gnarly, like shit inside my pillowcase or something. And then the thoughts get really dark and I'm like, no, I'm gonna sit on them too hard. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sit on them too hard. I'll just say, oh, I didn't see him there. <laughs> sit on them too hard. That's not what I did. I didn't do that because really the lawnmower is what they deserve. So anyways, oh I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Look, I know. I can feel all of the cat people really backing up on that one. <laughs> but I can feel all the dog people. 
I can feel you. Really leaning in. And I can hear your thoughts. Why stop it too? There's so many more out there. So anyway, I'm at a restaurant. I'm telling my friend all about this. I'm like, God, I gotta kill these cats. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and that's when I can, I can feel that there's a cat lady on the other side of the booth in the restaurant. And by feel, I mean smell. I can smell her. <laughs> you know the smell, it's that litter, piss, and loneliness, right? So. She pops up out of the booth in her unicorn fucking sweater or whatever. Just like towering over me. And she goes, what did you say about cats? <laughs> and I had to think quick, right? And I was like, oh, right, that, uh, we gotta be real PC now. There's only like one thing that you're allowed to hate in public anymore. So I'll just cover my bases. And I go, lady. Oh, all the people in the restaurant were froze, by the way. <laughs> Everyone there is just like, what's about to happen? And I go, Lady, I, I didn't say cats. I said kids. <laughs> and she goes, oh, why didn't you say so? Everybody hates kids. The lawnmower is what they deserve. <laughs> and then everyone just went back to eating like, oh, good, only children. That's good, that's good, only children. Isn't that crazy? And we all know that's true. Kids are the last group of people you're allowed to publicly hate, right? If you hate, if you said, I hate any other group of people, you get kicked out of Chili's. <laughs> but you could be at a Chuck E. Cheese, standing on the tables like, I hate these fucking kids! I hate all these fucking kids! And the parents and the employees will just look at you like, yeah! He gets it! He's our new leader, this one. It's crazy to me. I always like kids. Like, I, I, I can't believe people say that so casually. Oh, I just kind of hate kids. And my son's like standing next to me. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck did I do? Like, watch your mouth. But also, yeah, fuck this guy, right? It's crazy. I'm the only person who thinks it's a social red flag. Ever. In a, in a social setting when someone's like, ah, oh, you know, I just kind of hate kids. I'm always like, really? The children of Earth. Okay. Are you perhaps a Scooby-Doo villain? Like... Isn't that kind of extreme? All of the kids? <laughs> hey, look, you know, there's some kids I hate. Like, if you have a kid with a razor scooter, I think you should burn it. Oh. The kid. Because <laughs> I've been skateboarding for so long, you guys have to understand, when I'm at a skate park, it's always some kid on a razor scooter who wants to like, cut in front of me, I almost die. Right? And I usually snap. <laughs> right? I, I usually just snap and I just yell something like, Go home! <laughs> now, if I was a kid and a grown man riding a Japanese weapon around a torture rink looked me in the eyes and said, Go home, I would have been under my bed in like five minutes. But kids these days are like, Nah. <laughs> I have just as much of a right to be here as you do. <laughs> and I'm always like, no you don't! This is all I have! <laughs> don't, you, don't you know that the less you have to live for outside the skate park, the more your rights increase inside the skate park? And then their mom wants to come over to me and be like, get real, buddy, we're at a park. And I'm always like, get real? You want me to get real with your Tom's shoes and your Gucci purse? You want, 
You want me to get real? Oh, I'll get real, lady. When you were pregnant with this little demon, I was out in the streets collecting petitions so that we could get enough signatures so that we could even build this skate park. And then when I, when I was over, I was out in the streets collecting money, doing fundraisers so we could even open this fucking skate park, okay? All right? And back before that kid was even a thought in your head, back when you were still doing coke off of a chrome toilet in some, in some Montana bathroom somewhere following the killers around, okay? When you were doing that, I was out in the streets getting kicked out of every spot in the city and they forced us into this skate park and this is now the only place we're allowed to exist. So don't come to me with your kid in his mohawk helmet and his Target brand Ramones shirt and tell, and tell me to get real. You get real. But you know, um, I'm looking forward to going back to that skate park when the restraining order is lifted, but... Uh, Several, several years away. <laughs> I'm just trying to give my kid a good life. You know, I had a rough when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I was like the poor kid, you know? Obviously, the poor kid. Like, my bedroom was a trailer. I know, that would have been fine, actually, except my name is Taylor. Yeah, you guys know what happens when you're in a school full of teenagers and your name rhymes with your misfortune? <laughs> the only kid who knew what I was going through was Fat Pat. Just Trailer Taylor and Fat Pat hanging out all day. But then it was just us. And a new kid showed up and his name was Tony. And he was tall and skinny, sharp around the elbows. Sucks for you, great for us. You're in the gang, Boney Tony. <laughs> Let's do this. We call ourselves the Unfortunates. It's a real sad lunch table. We're like the Avengers, but with no powers or friends. <laughs> but honestly, Fat Pat and Boney Tony, they didn't have it nearly as bad as Trailer Taylor. <laughs> Dude, Trailer Taylor's last name is Clark, which rhymes with Park. <laughs> yeah. My name rhymes so perfectly with Trailer Park. <laughs> that if you make fun of me, you sound like a goddamn English lit major or something. <laughs> All the opportunity for rhyming and alliteration, like now I get it. Like one time this guy goes, hey, Trailer Taylor's never gonna get a real life wife back to his Clark Park in the dark. <laughs> and I couldn't even get mad. I was like, that was beautiful. <laughs> and then him and all the other teachers just laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. And laughed. But, I did get a real life wife back to my Clark Park in the dark, guys. It happened. <laughs> nice. I'll be honest, you guys were a little late on that applause. <laughs> I felt most of you guys hesitate. Like a lot of you guys were like, I feel like we should give it to him. And then, and then a lot of people were like, no. And I know why that is. It's because most people just don't give a shit about marriage or kids or your love or happiness or any of that shit anymore. Right? See, one guy. And I know people feel like that. That's why at my wedding, we wanted to do something really different. We wanted to have like an epic wedding, but we were broke, right? So we did something that revolutionized weddings and we did a wedding open to the public. And we charged at the bar. See where this is going? Yeah. It paid for the whole wedding. It was epic, and we made like $334. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't believe that there are regular weddings anymore after that. Everybody wants to go to a wedding. Everyone will go to your wedding. And so we did it crazy style. Like we had all these, per we were, I care about my audience, right? So we had a 230 people there and we had nine performances leading up to the ceremony. We had a burlesque dancer, there was gymnastics, like it was crazy. And then when the ceremony started, everyone was like, okay, it's gonna get serious. 
And that's when the minister took the microphone and goes, Marriage! <laughs> marriage, marriage! Yeah, we snuck up Princess Bride reference into our goddamn wedding. You're goddamn right we did. That is not where it ended. When we got to the part that nobody ever takes advantage of in their wedding, which is the objections. <laughs> Every wedding I go to, no objections. What the fuck is going on, people? <laughs> we all go to a wedding. It's not that we want someone to object and ruin the wedding or end the marriage, but we all kind of just want to be at a wedding where it happens. <laughs> right? We all sit there and we're like, come on, anybody? All right, just another boring wedding again, I guess. So at my wedding, I booked an objection. I don't know why nobody does this. We got to that part where the minister goes, does anybody object to these two people getting married? And a guy stands up and goes, I object! And every single person goes, what the fuck? But also, all right, all right, it's happening. And this guy gets to the front, grabs a microphone, he's elbowing up family members and stuff. He goes, I object. I object. Not to this marriage, but to marriage in general. And then he gave a five minute articulate, brilliant speech about why marriage is a garbage institution that no one should be involved in. <laughs> and at my wedding, got a standing ovation. <laughs> That's how everybody feels. Even my, what I thought was happily married mother stood up like, yay! He's got some good points. <laughs> and I'm so lucky. We had the best wedding ever. That's how I know I picked the right wife. It was after our wedding. <laughs> but, <laughs> because we collaborated all these ideas and together we created this vision of our wedding completely on our own and it was magnificent. I mean like, not only did we have the objections and was open to the public, charged at the bar, when we did our vows, Karina did her vows, and then I did a tight five to seven of stand-up comedy. <laughs> I mean, there's like a hundred of you guys here now. There's like 300 people at my wedding, okay? That was the best stage time I'm ever gonna get. <laughs> and my wife let me do it. She encouraged it. Dude. And then, I haven't even told you guys about the second objection. <laughs> After the first objection, my friend Jacqueline rides in on a fake horse, like a broomstick horse, like dressed like a knight, and she goes, I object, and I am going to fight you and challenge you to a bow staff fight for the hand of fair Karina. And I went, I accept. And I put out my hand, and a bow staff landed in my hand. <laughs> And then we had a choreographed bow staff fight. I fake killed her, she died, and then we got married, okay? <laughs> now, do you guys have any idea how rare it is that a little girl gets her dream wedding? <laughs> almost, almost never. Do you know how much rarer it is that a little boy gets his? <laughs> I think you gotta marry up. And everyone always thinks they're settling or reaching or whatever, but I'm reaching. I know exactly who's who in this <laughs> relationship. Because when we meet people, I am like in panic mode if they meet her first, because then I have to try to like act like I'm good enough to be with her. <laughs> I'm just like grasping at straws, trying to figure it out on the fly, you know? They're like, I met your wife. And I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, she told you that? Wow. 
Ja. Yeah. Ja, yeah, ja. Yeah. She, uh, she was the valedictorian of her high school. But hey, you know, I also went to high school. Pretty much equals. What's the, oh yeah, that's right, she got a scholarship to NYU. Hey, I would have gone there, but they don't let you in unless you can smell it. Yeah. Political. What? Oh yeah, that's right, she speaks three languages. Man, the only thing I've done three times is go to jail. I know. So, what are you, a boss or something? Get the fuck out of my face. We're done here. People ask me a lot of weird questions now that I have a kid. The other day, this guy goes, So, did you get him circumcised? I was like, That's weird. I just ordered a salad. But since you asked, no, I didn't get him circumcised. He goes, aw! Oh. He goes, aw, oh, don't you want a match? I was like, what? What kind of establishment is this? Worst Olive Garden I've ever been to. I know that. And honestly, why would I need to match my son? What utility does that serve in our future? Like, are we going on the road together or something? <laughs> and if so, what kind of weird act would that be? Just a carnival barker comes out and goes, come one, come all, see the father, his son, and they're matching dicks! <laughs> Only one is bigger than the other. But it's not the one you think. Um, we've reached the dick joke section of the night. <laughs> when I first tried, started trying to have kids, my friend goes, so, you're gonna pull the goalie? And I was like, what? Oh, like not wear condoms? Oh, okay, well, I'll play along with your metaphor. I pulled the goalie a long time ago, but I am excited to start shooting for the goal. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've been hitting it in the stands for years. <laughs> I used to online date back in the good old days when it was still called MySpace. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, that's right, baby. MySpace dates. That was the first interaction I ever had with a woman, really, was like via MySpace. Because I was like, I was 18 years old, but I looked 11. Right? I had a, my hair was parted in the middle, bowl cut style, right? My name was Trailer Taylor, for God's sakes. I wore a cape most days. Like, it's just... So I'm sitting there on MySpace, and I can't believe that all these pretty girls are on there with their pretty faces, just open inboxes. So I'm just sitting there like, want to go on a date? Sand. Want to go on a date? Sand. Want to go on a date? Sand. Just spamming all of my space, right? Want to go on a date? Sand. I had a huge keyboard. Want to go on a date? Sand. Want to go on a date? Sand. Want to go on a date? Sand. Reaching all the way across. Tiny guy. So, so eventually one of these girls gets back to me like, I'd love to go on a date with you. And I was like, holy shit. I gotta get ready, I gotta, I gotta fucking part my hair, duck down the middle like I always do. And then she came over, and I was like, oh my God, I'm going on a real life date, I can't believe this. So I get to the front door, and I open it up, and she is, she's beautiful, and her very beautiful face is, I don't know, like eight and a half feet off the ground. She is the tallest person I've ever seen in my life. She is a giant, the BFG is standing in front of my house. A totem pole of a lady. And now, I'm a pretty nice guy. I didn't do what I would normally do when a monster shows up to my house. And be like, ah! I was pretty nice. I was like, oh, hey, hey, yeah, no, come on in. Watch your head. We went inside and I'd already given up on any kind of romantic future this relationship might have. Cause I'm like five, seven on a good day, you know? Oh, no, this is not going to happen, right? So I just gave up, and I started doing what I normally do before I do stuff, 
when I was 18 in a white trash skater piece of shit from Everett. Get as high as humanly possible. So I go get this humongous bong that I had at the time. It was like, it was, it was like on, a, on like a, a furniture dolly. I'm like wheeling it over like this. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Oh yeah, no, that's right. What? What's that? No, I can't really hear you. Your mouth is very far away. Just speak up. So anyway, I start loading this thing up. And at the time, I used to smoke tobacco and weed at about a 50-50 ratio inside my bong because I'm from Everett. And, and so I start loading this thing up and I can hear her being like, are those drugs? Are you smoking drugs? And I was like, uh... <laughs> According to the federal government, they're drugs, but I really consider it medicine. <laughs> and the next thing I remember is her holding me by the shirt and going, Are you okay? Are you okay? And her hands are only doing this, but I'm shaking around like a rag doll. I wake up and I go, what happened? And she goes, you smoked the drugs. So cute. And then your eyes roll into the back of your head. And then you hit your head on the coffee table. And you fell over on your back and passed out. And that's when I scooped you into the palm of my hand. grabbed you by the lapels and said, are you okay? <laughs> and I remembered her saying that she didn't know what weed was and that she'd never seen anybody smoke weed before. So I played it off. I was like, oh, okay, good. That's how you do it. That's how it looks, that's how it works. Uh, that is how smoking weed happens. Um, in the future, if you see someone smoke weed and they don't hit their head on the coffee table, they're doing it wrong, okay? So she totally bought it. I was like, oh, okay, let's go see Tank Girl or whatever movie we're gonna see. And then we get inside the car and I unroll the sunroof so a giant giraffe neck can stick out of there, right? All right, guys, you got to get on board with these tall jokes, All right? They are my natural predator, and this is my only defense against them, okay? So anyway, she's in there, bugs are getting stuck in her teeth or whatever, and we're driving. And I realized that that whole ODing on weed thing that no one thought was possible, that I just proved possible, it kind of killed my buzz. So I took out my car bong. We all have car bombs. <laughs> Pull this puppy in. And it wasn't really a bong. It was a ketchup bottle and a trombone mouthpiece, but <laughs> it was mine and I loved it. So I pulled Gary in and me and Gary are sitting there and I realize I don't have any weed, but hey, there's some in my shoes. So I grabbed some of that out of there, put that in there. Oh, I don't have any water, but you know, I'm a white trash skater piece of shit from Everett. So I got some Mountain Dew floating around. A little Mountain Dew in that guy. Oh, I don't have any tobacco. No big deal. They're pretty much free in every gutter, right? So I pull over, grab a, grab a Newport out of the trash, right? I'm mixing that in. And I, she's crying, I think. I forget. But anyway, I just start smoking. And I don't pass out. But I do get crazy fucking eye. And the smoke is leaving my mouth and I'm watching it just kind of transform into what I can only describe as Falcor from the Neverending Story. Anybody remember the luck dragon? So, P.S. I root for the nothing. Anyways, um, 
Falcor, Falcor leaves my Volkswagen, and I just start, I'm so high, I'm just like, goodbye, Falcor! <laughs> goodbye! I'll help you save a tray you in the Oracle! And then that's when I hear sirens. Oh, no. Police sirens, clear as can be. Whoop, whoop, whoop! I'm like, oh shit, my car's full of smoke, my lights are fucking off, my seatbelt's not on, I'm just like, ah! I pull over, I flip my lights on, I pull my seatbelt on, and I stick my head outside the window, and the cop has already pulled over and is marching to my car like T2, like. <laughs> and I can see the whites of his eyes, right? Like, looking right at my face. And I realize that this is a good thing because he's not looking at Falcor. Falcor is flying free, baby. And I just try to hold eye contact with the cop. I'm like, officer, um, right here. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, I just realized my lights are off. Oh, I'm so sorry. That well, it won't happen again. And this cop just stops in his tracks like, hey, it's pretty dangerous roads out here. And I'm just safe checking. You have a good night, son. And I was just sitting there like, holy shit! That was close. <sighs> and then I turned to my date, and she has fled the vehicle. She is nowhere to be seen. My door's flapping in the wind. It's like, where did she go? Did she get spooked and then just like step out of my car and into Oregon or Canada or wherever her first step landed? I don't know. <laughs> but back into the wild, I assume. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I started thinking like, I was a really shitty to this poor girl. She didn't do anything wrong. I almost got us in serious legal trouble and I started to feel really bad. And I made a vow from that point forward that I would just never smoke weed and drive <laughs> with my lights off on a MySpace date with the BFG ever, ever again. Thank you. Oh, man. So I'm lucky to be married, man. Lucky to have married up. I am lucky that my wife is from Brazil. Whoa. Yeah, no one thought Trailer Taylor would get a Brazilian. <laughs> I thought they were reserved for fancy people. No, I got one. I actually went to Brazil, had an amazing cultural experience. I sat on a bidet for the first time. What in the butt? <laughs> I, who here has ever used a bidet? I don't believe the people who raise their hands. <laughs> the people who wooed, I believe, because that's also the sound you make when you sit on. <laughs> if you don't know what a bidet is, bidet is a French word. In English, it means addictive tickle. Now, I sat down on a bidet. I lost an afternoon. I don't know what happened. I blacked out. My eyes rolled in the back of my head. I missed meals. I saw God. <laughs> And then I woke up, and the only thing I remember, that was the best three hours of my life. Are you fucking kidding me? And in Brazil, there's bidets everywhere, you guys. And then I come back to America, and we're still wiping our asses like cavemen. <laughs> Putting dead trees in our hands. Brazil's sitting on super soakers right now, you guys. <laughs> And you're, how, is big toilet paper that powerful that they're keeping this technology away from us? You'd think in Shark Tanks America, there'd be like a themed bidet store on every corner. Like if there was a Flintstones themed bidet store called Yabba Dabba Days, I mean, it would be so popular. We'd have to go across the street to the Looney Tunes theme bidet store. It's got a little Porky Pig logo. It's called Bidet, 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 Bidet. That's all, folks. <laughs> Open 24 hours a bidet, seven bidets a week. That's the America I want to live in, people. That's Trailer Taylor's America. Thank you guys so much. I'm Trailer Park. 
Kevin Taylor Clark. Have a good night. The one and only Taylor Clark. You don't know me. You know, like, like I can do whatever I want. Because I want the world to see what it's done to me, okay? My dad plays bass. What the fuck does your dad do, huh? Like, I feel bad for people who believe in conspiracy theories now because all my generation's conspiracy theories came true. It's true. Think about it. Fucking Area 51 is real. UFOs are real. And weed is the cure for everything. I love you. Good night, everybody. I'm Taylor Clark.